In today's video, I am going to show you how to draft and sew this luxurious bias cut slip dress with a side split and a cowl neck. To begin, you will need to take the following measurements. Use a measuring tape and hold it fitted to your body with the underwear on you will wear with the dress. If you are struggling to get the distances between the measurement points, tie string around yourself and it should sit at your natural waist and hips. The high hip measurement is optional and is one that depends on your body shape. I personally have high hip bones that flare out quite quickly after my waist. So I like to take a measurement here and then a second measurement at my true hip, which is the widest point. You can actually add as many measurements as you need here. Just make sure that you get the distances between the measurement points too. At this point, it's also a good time to think about ease. Ease is the extra measurement added onto your body measurement to allow clothing to go over your body or for you to breathe and move. Some people like a lot of ease with nice loose garments. Some like very little ease so garments are fitted tight to their body. When making your own clothing you can determine this for yourself. You can proceed two ways. Option one, add your ease now to your body measurements and use that new total when drafting. Option two, draft to your body measurements and then place your lines proud of the measurements so that you'll treat the initial framework as we draw as the absolute minimum and aim for over. Decide now which you prefer and bear it in mind going forward. To begin, you'll need a long piece of paper that's the width of half of your body's widest point plus an extra five centimeters for room. Draw a vertical line centrally up the paper. Starting at about the one quarter mark, draw a line a quarter the bust measurement, perpendicular to the center line. Remember what we said earlier about ease. This is where it comes in. So if you're going with option one and adding your ease to your measurement, add it now and divide by four. Measure down the center line by the distance between your bust and your waist. At this point, draw another line perpendicular, one quarter of your waist measurement. Now go down, in turn repeating this process for however many points you deem necessary for your body shape. At the minimum, you will need bust, waist and hip. Finally, Mark a line at your hem point, measuring down from your waistline. On a bias slip dress, you'll find this line is usually the same width as your hips, or slightly wider if you want a flare. Sometimes you'll go inwards and create a pencil effect, but getting the fit correct and the side seam smooth can be harder. I recommend straight for your first try. Return to your bust line and measure upwards by how high you want your neckline to reach at the strap above your bust. This isn't the cleavage in the center. It's the part at the side where the strap connects. On this line, draw out half of your bust separation. That's the distance between the apex of your breasts. You can do it wider if you want your straps closer to the sides. Now join all these points up with a nice, smooth, pleasant looking line. Depending on your measurements, you may find it difficult to get a nice curve, mess around and adjust, but don't ever go further in than your measurements. If you used ease option two, we will add ease now. Draw proud of your measurements. The more proud you draw, the more ease. But remember, if you draw one centimetre proud by the end of the line, that will account to four centimetres of looseness on the garment. Everything is multiplied by four. I'll also add here that I want this garment to have no zipper and I have quite a small waist compared to my chest and hips. I added more ease at my waist to allow me to get the dress on. We now have our basic shape. You could leave it like this, but I'm adding the cowl neck. Cut along the centre front, across to the side seam above the bust line, leaving a hinge point. Spread this up by 2-4 to four inches. I like to spread it so that the top line becomes horizontal. 
I don't want a huge cowl neck, just a hint of the softly draped fabric at the centre bust. The more you extend, the more fabric will drape down and lower the cleavage. Place paper behind the gap and stick it down with masking tape. Next, we want to add the facing. This will give us that neat flawless top edge without any seams to disrupt. Place paper over the top so that it is big enough to go over the bust line. I like to tape it to the top horizontal edge I've just created. Trace the arm shape and side seam. Flip this upwards and you're left with a mirror image of your top section. Next, add your 1.5cm seam allowance all along the outer edge and a 2cm hem at the bottom. As we don't sew with folds on the bias, we need to duplicate this. The most accurate way to do this is to fold our paper in half directly on our centre line we drew first. Cut the outer edge, cutting both layers at once so we have a matching shape. To finish off, we label it up. Add notches at all the measurement lines. Make sure you include one at the top where the cowl switches to the facing. Finally, add a grain line 45 degrees from the centre front line. You can mark both true bias grain lines if you wish at this stage. So that would be 45 degrees going to the opposite side of the centre front line. The front is complete. To draft the back, we have already done most of the work. So begin by tracing the front, including all notches and grain lines. The back neckline can be shaped however you like, straight or you can dip it down low. No matter what though, it must begin from the armpit point. The reason it must begin here is that this is where it will match up to our pattern front. So curve it or leave it straight and attach it to the centre back line. Then add your seam allowance on top. Copy this line to the other side. You can do it with tracing paper or by folding in half along the centre back line. You just want it perfectly symmetrical. Label everything up and the back is complete. The final piece to do is the back facing. The back facing is similar to the front facing to hide that top edge but it is a separate section. Place paper over the top and draw out the top line, the side seams and then make a nice smooth line about 3 inches below. Label this up and add the grain line so it matches the grain line on the back. Remember to add your bust line notches. Other pattern pieces we need are strips an inch wide for the straps. I won't create a paper pattern for this but mark it directly on my fabric. Sewing on the bias can be slightly tricky. Add in a fluid and slippery fabric like a satin weave or silk textile and you need to add in a few extra steps to get that professional finish you want. First, you'll need pattern weights. These keep the fabric stable and still whilst you work. You can use literally anything for a pattern weight. These here are washers from the hardware store, crocheted together. I recommend glass head pins, preferably made for finer fabrics. The glass head allows you to press without fear of melting plastic. The finer points prevent snags and holes left in our fabric. Use a rotary cutter with a new sharp blade on a cutting mat to protect your table. I will admit freely here that I did not have the room to cut this on my table and had to use the floor and regular scissors. It did affect the accuracy of my cutting, so if you can manage to get this, it is an advantage. Small scissors for cutting notches and trimming away seams. You need accuracy to work with 1 8 inch seams on this project. You'll need a measuring tape to measure yourself as we saw at the beginning. And finally, a needle and thread. We are going to base stitch every single seam by hand during this construction. I will use a contrast thread so you can see it on camera, but I recommend a colour close to your fabric. For your machine, you can use a universal needle with a small number, but if you have them, a microtex needle would be even better. Finally, for your machine, a walking foot helps feed the fabric through at the same rate, top and bottom, getting even seams. My machine has this built-in walking foot as you can see. It helps the fabric through from above as the gripper teeth help below. 
You can buy walking foots as a separate attachment to your machine, but they vary between machine brand and type. Google for your machine and you'll find resources to help you with this. Again, this isn't essential, but can improve the look of your final garment. Also, I recommend sewing a toile to make any fit adjustments you require before starting on your real fabric. The layout of bias cut garments is very particular. If you get it wrong, the dress will hang funny and can twist in an unflattering way. To show you, I'm using this piece of paper to demonstrate my length of fabric. Lay your fabric on a flat surface single layer. Ensure none of the fabric is hanging off the side of a table or stretched or under any tension in any way. Take your time to get it really straight and square. The grain line runs in the direction of the fabric as it comes off the roll. So the long edge usually, your selvage edge. The true bias is 45 degrees off from this. You have one in either direction and these are 90 degrees from each other. We're taking advantage of the movement you get at this point in the weave to make our garment hug us, which is why we want this going around the body. Adding our grain line on, we place our first piece. I'll work with the front and use a measuring tape to place that grain line correctly from the selvis edge. Use pattern weights to begin to hold everything in place. Now here is a very common mistake people make for bias cut garments and I understand the temptation as it takes the least amount of fabric. You lay your back piece beside your first like this and this is wrong. The back piece must be placed on the opposing true bias grey line. So the grain line of the front is perpendicular to the grain line of the back. This is why you don't use a directional print fabric. Your back facing then needs to be placed matching your back piece direction. It feels like there is a lot of wasted space, but we can use this area to cut bias strips for our straps and other smaller garments like camisoles and shorts. This is the correct way to lay out. If you follow this, you'll get the best finish on your garment. Once everything is in location in a way you are happy, pin and cut with a rotary cutter if you can do to prevent moving and shifting. Here is my actual fabric. I couldn't film as I only had room to do this in my really dark and cramped hallway, but you can see how I've mimicked the layout of my paper. I've used the pattern weights to stabilise my fabric and pattern, then I've pinned around the edge. I'll now cut it. Once cut, leave in place if you can. If you don't have the space to do that, leave it attached to your paper and move it somewhere you can store it completely flat. Don't hang it, fold it or drape it over anything. Make sure all the notches are transferred before you remove the pattern paper. Also cut your strips for your straps. You can see here how much the fabric moves in this clip. Cutting this kind of fabric takes patience. Don't do it in a rush, you'll fall out with yourself. The first thing we will do is use iron-on interfacing. I have this roll of one centimetre wide lightweight interfacing, but you can cut your own from the bolt. Bias cut strips actually work better for this, but I'll show you how to work with regular hair. The interfacing will help to stop our garment stretching out of shape. Apply it to the arm area, stopping at the facing. I snip into the strip, leaving a hinge point to allow me to curb it.
also apply it to the top edge of the back. We will be using French seams to hide all the raw edges. Place your front and back together, wrong sides together. Pin all your notches and all the areas between. Hand baste along the side seam. I start with the side I won't be having a split. I actually placed my hand basting a little too close to my seam line here. It makes removing it later slower, but be aware to give yourself room to work. So at one quarter inch, starting from the armpit down. Always work in the same direction. Use a sharp new needle. Use a walking foot if you have one. Do not pull or force your garment through your machine and make sure it's nice and flat and supported as you work. Draping off the table can create warping. I use a straight stitch of a slightly reduced stitch length. Use an offcut to experiment on the best combination of tension and stitch length for your machine before you start on your garment for real. Remove your basting stitches, then trim your seam allowance down to about 1 8 inch. Press your seam allowances first to one side and then right sides together. When you press, place only the very tip of the iron on the fabric. Use a pressing cloth if you need to and a clapper. Don't move the fabric till it's completely cool to do the next section. Fully pressed, base stitch again with right sides together. We're going to sew beginning at the armpit down at the 3 8 inch point.
Remove the basting stitches and press the seam allowance towards the back. Again, use a pressing cloth and clapper if you need to. We now repeat the full process for the other side. The only difference this time is we only sew to the point we want the split to start. If you don't want to split, just go right to the hem like you did on the first side. The straps are made by sewing the strips right sides together and then cutting down the seam allowance to 1 8 inch. Next we use a loop turner to turn the tubes the right way round. You can also use a darning needle for this, you can use the threads themselves, there are lots of methods to explore and try. Once I turned my straps I wasn't actually happy with how thin they turned out. So I went back and repeated the sewing further from the folded edge to get a much thicker and softer looking strap. Once done, I put these to the side for later. To attach the back facing, you begin by attaching it to the front facing first using French seams. This is the exact same process as we've already done but on a much shorter scale. I also did both sides at the same time due to this.
once attached to the front facing, fold the facing inside of the dress with the dress inside out. Pin the back facing to the top edge of the back, matching the centre point and the side seams. Pin and match the armholes all the way along. As a last step, insert your straps into the fold of the front. Sew this at your machine at the 5 8 seam allowance. You may wish to hand baste this whole area before you begin so you aren't working with pins. You also want to leave a gap at the back where your straps will be attached. Press this edge again using just the tip of your iron and a clapper to set it. Insert your straps with pins into the gaps you left. I chose to cross my straps but you can do them however you designed and at this point try on your dress. Adjust the length and location of your straps at the back to fit you. Once happy, secure them properly by completing the facing seam. To prevent the facing from rolling out, we understitch it. When drafting my pattern, I never bothered to measure the length I needed the back facing, so I levelled this now with the front. I next need to finish this raw edge to prevent fraying. There is a few ways to do this, I used my overlocker and just went in a circle along the edge. You could use a zigzag stitch on your regular machine or you could do a rolled hem. I will be doing that on the hem of the dress at the end so just copy that technique here if you use that. I secured the facing with hand stitches to the seam allowance of the dress for extra security. The split should be completed next. First mark a line in chalk from the end of the French seam to the hem. This should be at the 5 8 seam allowance, but you should match it so it continues smoother from your seam. Press the seam under on this line. That will give you the, the clean edge we will see on the finished garment. To get rid of the internal raw edge, make a snip halfway into the seam allowance of your French seam, and then curl the fabric under and pin. You can press this now and base stitch if you wish. I just went straight to my machine and secured this in place with a straight stitch at the one quarter inch point. Before you begin your hem, you need to hang your dress up either on a hanger or mannequin and leave for 24 hours. As the dress is on the bias, the hem will drop sometimes quite a lot in areas depending on your fabric. Once you have left it to settle, put it on you or a mannequin and level it to the length you want. If you don't have a mannequin, you may need to get someone to help you with this step to get a neat, even hem. Measure from the floor to the bottom of your dress all the way round so it is the same. Now we work on the rolled hem. You can get a rolled hem foot on your machine but I'll be doing it manually. 
Begin by sewing all the way round at the one quarter inch. Press up using the stitch line you've just made as a guide. Trim down to a scant 1 8 inch really close to the stitch line. Now fold up again and press. Stitch on the exact same line as before. All your raw edges are neatly hidden inside and you are left with this tiny little ridge of a hem. I like to steam my dress now to let it relax and get out any construction creases I've made. Your dress is complete. It should fit you like a dream and hug your body in all the right ways. This is the perfect summer wedding guest dress for bridesmaids too. You could even make this as a luxury night dress because it's comfortable and there are no zippers. Bias sewing is more complex, but if you do the added steps shown, it really isn't impossible. You just need to be patient and have a nice flat table to work on. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and if you are planning to give this a try, let me know in the comments below how you plan to style it and what you're making it for. Let's share ideas. My name is Elfie So. Please like and subscribe to stay up to date with more sewing tutorials. I post for absolute beginners through to enthusiasts looking for inspiration. Join in and happy sewing.